Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The M1 Abrams tanks have been in service with the United States military since 1980. Through the years, it earned a reputation as one of the most capable and formidable tanks ever constructed. At 68 tons, the M1 is one of the heaviest tanks in service. But it also boosts a wealth of features that make it a truly fearsome opponent. The M1 is capable of reaching speeds of over 40 miles per hour. Its primary gun is a Rheinmetall RH120 smoothbore cannon, which can reach distances of 4,400 yards using the standard ordnance. It also features several machine guns to provide additional defense. As armor technology has improved over the years, the M1 has undergone several weapons upgrades, including switching from a rifled gun to the more versatile smoothbore option. This allows the M1 to fire a variety of different rounds of ordnance depending on the situation. The primary round is a depleted uranium shell known as the silver bullet. Here you can see an Abrams crew cleaning their primary gun with a bore brush before loading the primary weapon for a live fire exercise. The 120mm cannon is extremely powerful and accurate thanks to the fully stabilized turret, with much of the kinetic energy from firing being absorbed or dissipated instantly. As the M1 has seen extensive use in multiple theaters of war, its manufacturer, General Dynamics Land Systems, has been able to incorporate multiple improvements to ensure the over 40-year-old tank can compete with anything else on the battlefield. The M1 Abrams is known around the world for its immense firepower. You can see here the tank team from the 116th Cavalry Regiment conducting live fire exercises at the National Training Center in California. It demonstrates not only the long-range accuracy of the M1, but also the ease with which it can fire and retreat into a covered position to avoid counterfire. Contributing to the live fire exercises are M2A3 Bradley fighting vehicles, which provide both intel and support for the larger M1s. The Abrams is capable of firing standard rounds, high explosive rounds, and special anti-tank warhead rounds that can penetrate even the thickest armor. Despite being one of the heaviest modern tanks in existence, the M1 Abrams is surprisingly agile. Its Honeywell AGT 1500 engine puts out more than 1500 horsepower, pushing the 70-ton tank up to speeds of more than 40 miles per hour on paved roads and as much as 30 miles per hour when moving cross-country. Such speeds are rarely attempted unless absolutely necessary, as it poses a risk to the drivetrain and the crew's safety. Interestingly enough, the engine can run on multiple types of fuel, including diesel, gasoline, jet fuel, and kerosene. 
This ensures that Abrams always has the option to continue the mission, regardless of what fuel is available. Another feature of this M1 engine is how quiet it is. Despite the tank's 32-foot length and height of more than 8 feet, its engine is roughly as loud as a large electric turbine. Like most tracked vehicles, the M1 boasts incredible mobility atop multiple types of terrain, including mud, ice, and snow. That said, the vehicle's weight can pose a problem at times. In some cases, Additional vehicles may be needed in order to help the M1 out of a difficult situation. The tracks themselves feature shock absorbers to help reduce the impact of bumps and barricades. While the tracks are designed with rubber pads to provide additional grip on slick or wet surfaces. Most M1 drivers undergo extensive training on multiple surface types to improve their performance during actual missions. The U.S. military often sets up obstacle courses upon which M1 crews can practice to hone their abilities. When all else fails, the M1 can be transported by truck, train, and some of the Air Force's larger cargo aircraft. Here, you can see the several M1 tanks arriving in Poland in the middle of winter. Though the tank's systems are somewhat susceptible to extreme cold, the crew's ability to function primarily affects cold weather operations. Though there are several small heaters in the tank interior, they do not go very far in creating a comfortable environment. Since the majority of the tank is metal, icy conditions can impair some personnel. Fortunately, tank crews train extensively for such environments. Though they may not necessarily build up a tolerance to the cold, they can make sure they're adequately prepared and equipped to operate in low temperatures. Snow and ice have always proved challenging for military operations. For that reason, many countries have invested in vehicles that are uniquely well-suited to wintertime mobility. A good example is the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, or JLTV, used by the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. First introduced in 2016, these trucks were initially intended to replace the Humvee, with multiple variants able to serve as cargo vehicles ambulances, and mobile command posts. Each JLTV has a top speed of 70 miles per hour and weighs around 11 tons.
Per Pentagon specifications, they can travel up to three miles with the perforated fuel tank and maintain all mission capabilities in temperatures as low as negative 40 Fahrenheit. In countries that experience long, challenging winters, such as Norway and Sweden, there is a clear preference for tracked vehicles. One example is the BV-206, or Bandvon. Split into two separate units, this all-terrain vehicle can carry up to 17 people across a wide array of surfaces. It can reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour on roads, and despite boasting significant armored protection, it only weighs around 10,000 pounds. The BV-206 has been in use since the early 1980s, and more than 11,000 of these unique machines have been built for armies in Austria, Canada, Finland, and dozens of other countries. The rear trailer features a modular design that allows it to be reconfigured for different uses. Unlike other split vehicles, all four tracks are powered to ensure the Bond Vaughn can take on even the most challenging terrain. Again, the primary challenges of working in such a cold environment generally revolve around personnel, not equipment. This is where training can be extremely helpful. These paratroopers from the 25th Infantry Division are performing casualty evaluation training in Norway. This particular exercise requires the use of snowmobiles and stretchers mounted atop skis. This drill took place during Exercise Swift Response, which is an annual multinational effort to enhance combat readiness between the U.S. allies and partners. Back in the United States, paratroopers from the 4th Infantry Brigade are performing a snow jump in negative 21 degree conditions. These men and women are jumping out of C-17s and C-130s, landing at a drop zone near Donnelly Training Area. The jump itself is just the start of the exercise. And the troops are required to engage in tactical operations the moment they hit the ground. This includes gathering their packs, recovering their parachutes, and navigating to a rallying point. These troopers are participating in yet another exercise in the cold Alaskan winter. This time, the goal is to enable rapid, orderly, and safe movement of air defense systems around a battlefield. The men and women are heavily insulated from the appropriate gear, which can inhibit mobility and make it more difficult to operate weapons and other tools. With adequate preparation, they can learn to do their jobs in any extreme, be it cold, heat, desert, or swamp. This is why the U.S. military spends so much time exposing its troops to new challenges and conditions.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.